everyone and welcome back to the channel. Our channel is all about crafts. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining us. And if you're stopping by, please do consider subscribing and joining this family. We're all about making channels proud over here. It's really fun over here. But if you're part of the family, you already know the vibes. I love you. Okay, so today, last video of the Christian History Month. And today we are talking about Ubab Richard Ngiti. Oh man, it has been a beautiful month. It has been a beautiful month. And yeah, let's get to his history. So Obab Richard Ngidi was born in 1921. Um, can we say it all together? Where? In KZN. Um, okay, so he got saved. We crossed the Abab Nicholas Bengu. These people, guys, are connected. Like, it's so beautiful for me to read um how this one is connected to this one and this one is connected to, it's it's beautiful so Oba Ngidi um received christ we crusade about nicholas Bay, right and then he was later on baptized by Oba william Doom. how beautiful is that like come on guys come on okay so his home church was american board mission um and then they are saying because he was not born again he was baptized and outside his church and then one day it was a youth day they gave him a platform to shape and then because he's now born again and this is this is not really what his church was preaching and then he got the platform he was preaching christ he was preaching salvation he was preaching how one person should repent so that they can have a relationship with christ and that was a problem for the elders and the leaders in the church they called him they were like mm, why are you getting all this you were not supposed to preach like this and then it was a thing they were like no you can't be preaching things like this okay fine and then came a crusade um when there was a crusade they also gave him a platform there again and then at that time he did another thing that was not allowed in the church he started prophesying he was prophesying to people telling them this telling them that and then that was when they were like this boy we can't control this boy he's doing things that are not necessarily what we are doing as a church and then it was an issue and that is when him and his family officially left american board mission and then while they were still looking for a church they were praying about it one night Obama Gidi had a dream or a vision where he saw a gold road leading to heaven and it had AFM written on it and that is where he knew this is the church I will now go into. After that, they all, him and his family, they went looking for the nearest AFM and then at that time they did find it. The pastor there was Amos, Pastor Amos Mtiane, which was the leader of the church at that time and that's when he joined AFM officially him and his family and then he went to Bible school and then came back and then he officially started um, ministering and preaching in AFM um, and was ordained um, in 1965 at AFM and then he was officially pastor there okay these are the things they are saying he believed so much in now he's in AFM um, a different church and he's his now striving in his calling he's really doing what god has called him um they're saying one he believed so much in evangelism that was one of the things that he believed so much he believed so much in evangelism uh, crusades going out there and preaching the word he believed so much in that um two he believed so much in in prayer and fasting because these were the things that kept him standing as a man of god he believed so much in prayer and in fasting um three he believed in praying for people to be to be healed when they are sick. He believed so much in healing and the power of healing. He believed so much that people need to be prayed for. People need to get healing. People need to receive healing when they come to, to the church and come to receive Christ. They should be healed. He believed so much in that. And also, uh, number four, he loved people. They are saying one of the things that was amazing about him, he loved people. He made sure Uguti was in every single one in his church. He, he wanted to know everyone's name in his church. And that was how he had the love and shown the love to, to his congregation. Right? Right. And I think at some point, God instructed him to go on um, a 40 days fasting. And they really emphasized the, the part Uguti 
um, even in the Bible, not many men of God were able to fast that long. But Ubabu Gidi was able. God instructed him to go on prayer and fasting for 40 days. And then they're saying when he came back, there at least 10 people were healed uh, from being blind. They, they received sight after he came back from that fasting. That's how anointed and the power of God was just manifesting itself through him. Okay, the things that really excited me when I also read this was they're saying one time he, one of his children died and he did not have the money for the funeral, he did not have money to bury his child and he went on on the mountain to pray and he was like, Lord, this is the situation, I do not have money to bury my kid, I need the money please assist and then something supernatural happened they're saying after he was done with that prayer after he, he said amen when he opened his eyes the money was there he took the money and went and continued with the funeral guys like come on come all the way on like i mean i'm just i'm like it feels like for us this thing's a little bit foreign. It feels like it's a stretch. It feels like, did it really happen? Because we have doubts in our hearts. We don't believe that God can do such, he can do instant miracle. God can do anything. He can do anything. I mean, God can do anything. He literally can. And I'm just like, I look at this man of God who understood God in, in such a level where they were like, he can do anything and I will ask him anything. I will believe that as he said he can do anything he would he can really do it i'm just yo know, guys saying one of the things that were really big about him he was one of the first first men of god to anoint and ordain women as pastors especially in afm and also just in general he was one of the first men of god who believed so much that women are called women can preach women can minister and then he was the first one who to anoint and ordain women as pastors and then he eventually got called home um in 1985 he died of diabetic coma um and that was it i guys i wanted to keep this one short because this is the last video and i really want you guys i hope and pray that you guys you received this histories and you it has shifted your faith in any way it has challenge you in any way it has made you believe that when god says he can do anything there's nothing too hard for him he can literally do it this man of god from where we started with bab william duma bab ngidi bab Bing, everyone i've talked about these men of god are just a living proof that god can do it he can still do anything for us he is a god of miracles signs and wonders and if we believe if we fully believe that he can he can do it for us so i hope you were inspired and you were challenged and your faith was challenged it was shifted it was improved by just watching and hearing this histories and i hope you go and do more research and really get inspired and as we continue this journey know that god can still do it whether with us as young people whether with our old men men and women of god anyone in the christian community god can do these things for us i thank you so much for watching um this is the end of the christian history month i'll see you next year when we do and uh, talk about other men of god other giants that have done beautiful things in this journey i love you so much for watching i'll see you next week with another interesting topic that i want us to talk about i love you so much for watching but jesus love you more